Before there was anything, nothing ever was, nothing ever was, nothing ever was. God created everything, everything that was, everything below us and everything above. How'd he do it day one? He made the day and the night day two. He made the big blue sky day three. He made the land and the sea. God made the world and God made me. God made the world and God made me. Day four. He made the sun and the sky day five. He made the birds that fly day six. He made people like me. God made the world and God made me. God made the world and Thanks for joining us for this week's Kid Zone. Glad to have you with us, and I'm really excited. We're starting a brand new series. We're going to talk, be talking about creation for the next few weeks, so I'm really glad you decided to join us for the very first lesson in this series. I'm guessing that all of you have used some of the things that I have out on the table to make something before. Maybe you've used a few Legos to build a really tall tower or a cool car. Maybe you've, um, when mom allowed you to use Play-Doh, it does tend to make a really big mess and leave some remnants behind and can make a mess in the carpet if you're not careful. But you open it up and it has that really cool smell and you made something out of Play-Doh. You sculptured it into something like the kids are going to do later for our game. Um, maybe you had some paper, a sketch pad or something and used crayons or markers, maybe even some paint. But you use something like this and you made your own creation out of it. I'm going to ask you another question. Have you ever made something from nothing? Now, I don't mean a blank page that you used markers or something to make a design on. And I don't mean just a shapeless lump of Play-Doh. I mean literally created something new from nothing from thin air. I didn't think so. See, we are all creative, like the God who made us. We love art. We have made buildings. We like to create awesome dinners and my favorite desserts. But we never have made something from absolutely nothing. It's just not possible. See, when you see people building a bridge, of course they have to have material like steel to be able to do that. If someone's gonna create an elaborate salad, they've gotta have some vegetables to do that. In order to have vegetables, you have to plant some seeds and have some soil and water and sunlight. And if I'm gonna bake something, I have to go to the cabin and get out some flour and sugar, some eggs from the refrigerator. See, I have to have something in order to create something new. I have to have something to start with. 
I can't just start and snap my fingers and have something appear. I can't do that. I have to have some materials to begin with. I, I can be creative, but I simply can't create something out of nothing. Today in our new series, we're going to be talking about creativity, specifically how God created our world. And the first thing that we're going to learn about God and how creative he is, is that when he made the world, he didn't need any tools. Like we need Legos or Play-Doh to make something, not God. See, he's not limited like we are. He just spoke and creation came to be. Here's what I mean. Before the beginning of time, there was nothing, nothing at all. No earth, no light, just emptiness. It was like the inside of a basketball or a cup after you drink all the milk out of it. But God was there and he had an idea. He wanted to fill up the emptiness. And guess what? Since he's God, he can make things appear just by speaking. It's like if you could say, let there be a roller coaster, and then any kind of roller coaster you wanted just appeared. So in the middle of nothing, God said, let there be light, and the darkness was filled with light. Now we know what light is, but remember it had never existed before. Everything God made was brand new. So it was probably like when you're asleep and someone comes in the room and flips on the lights, except there were no people yet. God was creating a world for them first. Anyway, light was the first thing God made. He called the light day and the dark night. He made a huge space above water and called it sky. Then he gathered all the water, separated it from dry ground, and called it sea. He called the dry ground land. God called it all good. See, God is all powerful. There is nothing that he cannot do. When we open up the Bible, that's really the very first thing that we learn about him. And here's what I love the best part of this, is that this God, the all-powerful God, the same God who created this wonderful world, wants to know you and me personally. Isn't that amazing? I think that is the very best thing to know. The object you see before you is a nightlight. Now, even though it's not very big and not very powerful, it is very good to use at night, especially uh, when you're trying to sleep. It makes you feel safe. It takes away some of the darkness. Also, uh, the light is good, and it's enough light to keep us from bumping our toes, stepping on Legos. It helps direct our path, so that way we don't bump into a wall when we're going to the bathroom. Instead of going into the bathroom, we bump into the wall. That wouldn't be good, would it? So night lights are great for that. Even though they're not very powerful, they're enough to give us uh, to give us safety and enough to keep us feeling safe. Uh, it makes me think of creation. On the first day, God created light. And on the second day, he created water and sky. This same God who made all of these is the same God that we love and we take care and uh, we uh, talk to every day that we worship, and that we remember. So remember that the same God, and what is so blessing is that God's uh, power is so great. But his love for us is even greater. The same God who created the light created a son who died for us that we could have a relationship with him. That's how important you are to him. Okay? All right. Thank you, and remember God today. All right, boys and girls, hi once again. We're doing a new memory verse, and so I wanted to get you started. You need to, uh, I want you to write it down, okay? I want you to put it to memory, all right? So that you can use it, and so that you can meet, uh, make it a part of your life, okay? Today's verse comes out of Psalm, Psalm 24, 1, okay? Let's look at it together. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Psalms 24, 1. So that means that this, this ball that we're living on, earth, belongs to the Lord. And everything in it, the things you're wearing, the clothes you're, the, uh, clothes you're wearing, the food you eat, all come from the Lord. And we, you out there, we all are, are part of the Lord. Uh, we are we're created by God. And so I hope you remember that. And when you're feeling bad, when you're feeling low and bad on yourself, remember, 
God made you, and he made you perfect, and he made you for a reason. All right? All right, thank you, boys and girls. Work on it. Memorize it. Bye. We've talked about how none of us can make something out of nothing, but our all-powerful God sure can. You know, it's easy for those of us that know about God to sometimes forget who he is. If we go to church all the time and we sing songs about him and we pray maybe before meals or maybe before you're taking a big test that you want to pass, you just kind of get to where those things are habit and you don't really think about him. You know what I mean? You just do them. But how often do we really stop and remember that this is the God, the one that we're praying to, the one that we're talking to, this is the God who made the light, the ocean, all the creatures that are in the world, the food that we eat, the air that we breathe, the people that we love. He was all powerful in the beginning and he still is today. So when we pray, we are talking to the same God who created this universe that we live in out of nothing. He just spoke the words and they came to be. That same God that had the power to do that cares about every detail of our lives. He cares about the things that you're worried about, those things that might keep you awake at night, that keep playing around in your mind, the things that make you worry. He cares about the things that make you sad, the things that hurt your feelings, all of those things. He cares that. He cares about them. And he wants you to be able to talk to them, talk to him about them, because he loves you that much. And the same God who created this universe, the all-powerful God who wants to know you, who wants you to talk to him, loves you so much that he sent his son to die on the cross for your sins. That's a lot of love. So my challenge to you this week is don't just get used to talking about God, to praying before you eat, to going to church, to singing those songs. Think about that. When you see the things in creation, think about that all-powerful God who spoke those things into existence. And think about the fact that he cares about every detail of your life. And maybe you, you don't really know that much about God. And these things are new to you. Maybe you've never heard really before about how the world was created. And, you, and this is brand new. I encourage you to keep joining us every week so that you can, you can find out for yourself about this God that we're talking about. And you can see that this all-powerful God loves you and wants to know about you as well. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you that when you created the world, you were so powerful that all you had to do was speak and it happened. And I pray that you would forgive us for the times that we just get so used to knowing about you that we just take it for granted and we don't think about the power that you have and, and we don't really thank you for all the things that you created for us. And we forget that in this amazing world that you gave us, that you care about every detail so much that you care about us. But we thank you for that. We thank you that even in, even in your awesomeness and your powerfulness, that we matter to you. And help us to never forget that. We thank you for your love. We thank you for this wonderful world that you created for us to enjoy. And we thank ask these things in Jesus name. Amen. And here we go. And we're going. <laughs> Hi boys and girls. How are you all today? I hope you're doing well. Today we are playing a game called Blindfolded Sculptors. Throughout history and time, sculptors have been doing work of art. Blindfolded. <laughs> Anywho, they got one minute to sculpt an animal of their choice, except a snake. And then when they're done, they got to take off their blindfolds and guess what each other made. Will they be able to? 
I doubt it. All right, are you ready? You ready, Hope and Ian? Yeah. All right, wait for it, wait for it. I gotta get back my phone. Wait for it, here we go. On your mark, you got one minute, 60 seconds. On your mark, get set, go. Time's up. Huh? No, I'm just kidding, go ahead. <laughs> Ah, oh, the smell of Play-Doh in the morning. Ah, I love that smell. I know, Diablo Now, to play this game, really all you need is Play-Doh and, and maybe some blindfolds and participants. Ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Boop, 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 boop. All right. Take off your mask, boys and girls. Hey, that didn't turn out bad. <laughs> <laughs>